So welcome, Gay. It is so exciting to have you and to, for us to get and get to sit down and have a chat. And we sit down and have lots of chats, actually. But this is we kind do. of this is we this do. is real special. Yeah. So first of all, I'd just love to, yeah. for you to tell everyone um, just your journey of becoming a Christian. Oh, uh, I became a Christian at thirteen. Uh, my parents didn't go to church prior to that. Uh-huh. Um, I had a great grandmother that prayed us all into the kingdom of God. God bless those grandmothers. Yes, right? I loved it. And um, we all knew her as the woman that could get God to do anything, it seemed like. Right. When she prayed, we knew God would answer. And so when I came, became very sick and ill at age 13, it was a time where my whole family investigated and said, what are we doing? We need to get back to church. Now, my parents would send me to church. I'd go to Sunday school. I'd go to vacation Bible school. Um, it was four blocks from my house. And so thought I would give my heart to the Lord at one time, but my girlfriend talked me out of it. Too many <laughs> rules. So, <laughs> But I really needed... Um, I really needed God at that time. I needed a healing in my body, and I, I needed answers. And the pastor came and sat with me, and I gave my heart to the Lord then. Wow. And I never really had a time that it was, I wasn't close to God. Gotcha. I, I just That's needed awesome. him. I yeah. just needed That's him awesome. so much. Yeah. And then you went through high school, mm-hmm. um, college. I think your dad passed away when you were how old? My dad passed away when I was 19. Okay. My sophomore year of college, uh, we were loading up the car, and he had a massive heart attack. Wow. And so that changed my life that year. Right. Um, My mom said he would have wanted you to go back to college, so off to college I went. Okay. And I was fine as long as I was at college. Not so good once I came Came home. home. And then mom remarried. A little she bit after did. that. And she you did. really loved your stepdad. I did. Yep. He was the best thing that happened to my mom. Isn't that awesome? It's so good that you can say that. Um, and then you met your husband, Bill. Tell me about that. Well, we were in college at Oral Roberts University. And um, he was quite the ladies' man. Oh, I can say that really? now. I can say that now. <laughs> <laughs> But... Um, and I thought he was awfully cute, okay. but I thought somebody that is always a ladies' man, that's not for me. Not my type of guy. No, right. no, no, no. Uh-huh. Just, yeah, no, no. So by the by November of my freshman year, we started dating. Okay. And uh, we had a little time where we were parted ways. Yep. And then after my, I think it was after my junior year, we married. Awesome. So, and then you stayed in Oklahoma for a bit, right? We stayed in Oklahoma for 17 years. Wow. And he worked at ORU. Yep. And um, and you were teaching. I right? was teaching in the public school there and at the church school, Victory Christian Center. Yep. And um, things changed there. We moved to New Jersey for the three years, came back yep. to Oklahoma. And then we moved here. To Virginia they, Beach, yeah. They offered Bill a job at Regent University. Okay. okay. And um, it was it was great mm-hmm. living here. Never thought I'd leave Oklahoma. Thought that's where I was going right. to die. Right. I was going to be a principal. I was going to do all this. Well, I guess God had other plans. Yeah. And we came here, and I just to fall in love. Always attended this church. Yep. From the first Even day. before we were here, you were yeah. here. Yeah. And um, I felt it was a godsend. Yeah. And always has been. Yeah. I remember when we moved here and um, met you and Bill. And you were just, from the get-go, just meeting you one conversation. You know, Steve and I were like, wow, this couple are solid you know, mm. pillars in the house of God. So I know, and, and I'm grateful that God strategically moved yeah. you here. Um, but then you had you also had one son. You have one son. Yes. And yes. he was born how long after you were married? Uh, it was about six years. Okay, okay. So we waited a while. Yep. We waited a while, and um, I was a teacher. Mm-hmm. 
didn't know if I could be a parent. I saw everybody else <laughs> with their kids. They send yes. me, and I think, I don't oh, think gosh, I could do can this. I, do this? Yeah. I can mess up a kid in a city minute. <laughs> and I thought, no, I can't do this. But yeah, uh, we were blessed to have a son. He's yes. a great son. He is. Great son. And he's grown and married and has three daughters. He does. So you he, went from the boy world into, yes, the, yes, into yes. the girl world. So yes, yes. it's so fun, so fun. But I guess today what I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, your, you and Bill's journey. You were on, obviously he was diagnosed with cancer. Do you remember what year that was? It was 2001. 2001. So we'd only been here a couple of years. Yes. Yes. And then Bill got the diagnosis of cancer. And yes. just talk to us about that. How was that in the moment you hear you have cancer? Obviously you're there at the doctor's office with him. Yeah. How yeah. were you guys? We weren't good. No. I, I will admit it. I, I wasn't very good with it. Okay. Uh, I took a moment and I'm always, I was always the one that would take a moment and I'd say, okay, okay, I, I don't know where God is in this. Right. Where is he? Right. I'm not sure I know, but there has to be more than this. Yep. And um, Bill was just upset. Yeah, and rightfully so. We mm -hmm. didn't expect the diagnosis no. that we had. No, and we had a receptionist at that doctor's office that came in and asked someone to watch the phones, and she says, "I'm a Christian, and I want you to know that God can help you through this." Wow. And I thought, I guess that's where God is. Yeah. That's where he is. That is where he is. Mm -hmm. He because he had someone th there when we were thinking, what do we do? What we, do we do? They were wanting us to make decisions. We couldn't make any. We had to go home. We didn't know if we'd make a good one then either. Right. But yeah, it was it was a hard slap I can in your only face. Imagine. Um, and then after that, there was a surgery. Bill had a surgery. He did. And then the treatment plan was chemo. Yes. And that was for how many years? Was it, he was had chemo uh, treatment for four years. Okay. The last four years of his life. Okay. Okay. Where he had chemo treatment yep. of some sort. Yeah. And in the beginning, the, the doctors were pretty positive, actually. Yes. Test results were coming back. We'd have, we were in remission. Everything seemed to be going perfect. We were traveling. We traveled to Europe a bunch. Yep, I remember that. I had the time of my life doing that. Yep. And then, then it all kind of came to a screeching halt. Yeah. I think, you know, just in our conversations, you were saying, you know, you were praying and believing mm -hmm. for healing, for, you know, the cancer to be gone um, the whole way. Yes. Um, and so... It was maybe 2011 when things took a turn for the worst. It was. Yeah. It was. So tell me about that. What what started happening with Bill? Everything stopped working. Okay. Uh, his counts were so low he couldn't take chemo. Okay. And, and his cancer was growing. So what do you do then? We didn't yep. know. Yeah. There were no more treatments left. Okay. He was kind of known as the bion bionic chemo boy. Wow. Because he'd had, he so much. endured so many. Yeah. Yep. And um, we didn't know, we didn't know what that meant. Right. But you remained hopeful. I did. I thought, well, God's going to deliver us from all of this. Yeah. It's going to be and okay. And he, it's going to be fine. Yeah. You know, he's going to do it. I know he can. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, probably right up until he passed, maybe a couple of weeks before you realized it, it wasn't this going not, to happen. Right. So talk, talk to us about that. What was what were those moments like? We um, and Bill seemed to be right there with me because he wanted to, I think, help ease me into this. I think he already knew this might not. OK end well okay the way I wanted it to sure. end yeah so <laughs> um, we were he had already been sent home yeah uh, we'd already signed the DNR do not resuscitate wow 
Um, so was it in that moment when you're yeah. doing all that that you're kind of thinking, okay, do you think it was from your perspective, I don't want to face this or was it just complete ignorant? Like I, I can't I even... just didn't feel God would make me face it. <laughs> I understand that. I am going and to I, be so honest. I've, yeah, no, I've heard that I from thought, a lot of people. I yeah. thought, uh, yeah, I've done this and I've done that. And this is the way God's going to answer it. Uh huh. Because that's we have God all figured out, right? Yeah, we have God figured out. We don't yeah. realize how big He is. Uh huh. <laughs> he can yeah. do what He wants. <laughs> so then you're signing all this paperwork, and and the light goes on. Yes. You know, so to speak, where you realize, okay, this this is not looking good. It it didn't look good. Yeah. And the doctor, who was always so upbeat, he would always give us the. Uh, the the positive side, mm -hmm. and I I can't thank him enough. Yeah, for that. Yeah, um, there was one time that Bill had he couldn't produce blood platelets, which is a very critical thing, and he was in to get blood plat platelets. Yeah, and my son had gone with him. They came down three weeks prior to his death because they were living out of town at the time. They were living in Connecticut, and so. Um, it was taking a long time. Yeah. They wouldn't release him until things were yeah. just at I, a I certain point. I actually remember point. going to the hospital for one of those times. And yeah. I uh, just I just thought, oh, my, this is not good. I left school. It should be over. And there was, there was a tag on his bag, the bag, an IV bag that said critical adult patient and that's when you realize I, wow this I is said, serious yeah i said who put this on here <laughs> like that was going to change things right but it it was just a label mm -hmm. and it, it it got me to thinking and i thought well i still believe i still believe yeah yeah. And I went home and was still believing. And then that after that, we signed the DNR. I know yep. that's a little jumbled there. But, um, and things just went downhill. Yeah. And during that time, your son and daughter-in-law came down from Connecticut to stay with you. I think yes. they had a little girl. Well, they had three little girls, but the oldest yeah. was four or five? Yeah, four. Four. And then twin baby girls that were how old? Um they weren't even two months old. They right. had to have special permission to leave. From, to leave. Wow. Okay, so they made the journey from Connecticut, Connecticut. to here uh, and kind of moved in to be with you yeah. during the last few weeks, which in a sense it's like God it was, was a God moment. Totally, totally. And I remember we visited several yeah. times. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, obviously there's talk about hospice. Yes. And and what was what was that conversation? Well, they gave us a choice of two hospice, and one you did some medical testing, and I said, well, we definitely want that one because we're not going to do comfort care because he's going to get over this. He's going to get <laughs> over this, and I kept telling him, I said, you're going to be okay, and he go, okay, honey. By this time, he was in bed and. Yeah. He was on oxygen, and I kept saying, I kept repeating scriptures and all of these things, and I just was like, okay, okay. So the test came back, and it said there was no improvement. Oh, man, yeah. And that's when you kind of knew, okay, I kind of knew comfort care now. And yeah. um, I had a nurse, his nurse, mm -hmm. that talked to me, said, you need to let him go. Wow. They're big conversations in a short amount of words, there right? Were, they, yeah. they were. Yeah. And, um, you know, she says, he's ready. I, I said, I, I said, did you know I'm not? <laughs> I'm not ready. Yeah. And, it, and she goes, I understand, but do you want him to suffer? And I said, I have to be honest. I just want him here. Yeah. 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 And that's the way I was. And yeah. I thought, and that night I couldn't sleep. Yeah. And I thought, very selfish, Kay. You're so selfish. 
No, you just um, love your husband and want him to be here forever. Yeah, yeah, I didn't want to not face right what was going. That didn't bother me. Yeah, because the same God I was praying to for healing yeah. was also the same God that could help me through. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't yeah. want to do it. Yeah, I didn't want to lose him. I know. So Bill was at home. He was having hospice care. Um, there were some great nurses, weren't there, at the time? There were. There were. And then um, it was getting close. We all knew it was yeah. almost time for Bill to go to heaven. And I remember getting the call early, early in the morning um, that he'd passed. And we came down to your house. I'll never forget it. was yes, like, like 3.45 in the morning. Yes. <laughs> and so I remember we drive up to the front of your house. I'll never forget this moment. I mean, it was pretty incredible in the fact that Steve and I pull up we get out of the car and I know I've told you this and you had a yeah. tree out the front of your house at the yes, time yes and there was this bird mm -hmm. now maybe it does this every morning at 4 30 in the morning who knows who knows yeah but this bird was chirping at the top of its lungs and to me it just felt like it was heralding the fact yes that Bill was in heaven and it was this rejoicing of yeah. Pain has gone. Oops, pain yeah. has gone. It's all over. Um, and yet then you have to continue life. So we came in and prayed with you and, and then the journey began. So, yeah. you know, obviously there's a beautiful service. I remember. Now, what was your song that they were playing in the lobby? As oh, raindrops keep, keep falling, falling on, on your, your head. head. Yeah. And I remember walking in thinking, man, music is so powerful. Yeah. Because it, it just lightened, you know. It did. It Something did. that could and, and it is sad. Gosh, and when you lose anyone it's sad. But it brought out some incredible memories it and did. stories it did. that I think were, were really it did. were shared. And because you shared at the service, I'll never forget. You were phenomenal. Yeah. But here we sit now ten years after that. Yes. And still the tenderness in your heart, you know, and we've talked about this, that grief is a continual journey, isn't it? It you know? is. It is. And so let's talk about that. He passes away. You're yeah. still teaching. Yes. Talk about that first summer. What did that look that like? That first summer, I I decided to get out of Dodge. I had twin granddaughters, so I thought they need my help. Uh huh. So I went to Connecticut. I came back, and then I went back up there. Uh, they had decided to move down here, which, again... Elated. Yes. I was elated, yes. but I knew what that could mean yep. and all sorts of things. So things took a while, and it took till that August. Great. Okay. So some of the time I spent in my house by myself. I made plans. I had little quirky things I had to do. Which side of the bed do I sleep on? <laughs> Things that you don't normally think about, No, right? and I you thought, well, to I'm going to sleep on his side of the bed because I can look over. I could look over and see, and I put pillows. And so I thought, that way I won't see an empty spot. Right. That seemed like logic. Yeah. Now, I can't sleep on the side of the bed, <laughs> so it's just so <laughs> weird. The other thing I did that summer was I wanted to eat out. And I thought, not everyone's going to eat out the same time I want to. Okay. I'm going to have to do this by myself. So I planned an afternoon to do it by myself. Wow. I went to Williamsburg because uh -huh. I didn't want anyone to rescue me. Wow. <laughs> it was it's very all the things you, you overthink about, you all yeah, think about, yeah, you know? Yeah, I think yeah. about it. So I, I, I thought, okay, take a book, gay. Don't look like an idiot. Uh, you know, sitting there wandering, there looking around, and then I, and then I said, I'll go into the bar area. They always have little booths in there. Mm -hmm. I won't look like I'm lonely. I look mm -hmm. like I'm just an out of towner. Yep. Which I was. I went to Williamsburg, so I ate dinner by myself and drove right back. Wow. I thought I can do this. I can sit in a restaurant. Yeah. And not feel awkward. And it's the first, those all the first yeah. of those things. Yeah. Yeah. And then I I had to go back to school. And the teacher can't be a basket case no. in front of her class. Yeah. And when I went back, 
there were people looking to me as an expert now that my husband died. Wow. They, I wasn't an expert. No. I just couldn't. They would ask me questions I didn't want to answer. Yeah. I would hide from people. I would go to the bathroom. I would do anything. I'm ashamed to say that today. No. But is it what kind of questions? Was it things that just made you? How did you feel when this okay. first happened? Okay. And I thought, I don't want to answer that. Yeah, because you're devastated. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, I, and I thought, all I'm going to do is a blubbering idiot. Yeah, I'm going to burst into tears. And, and, and I'm not going to help you at all. Yes. And I may not be able to compose myself when yeah. I have a class to go back. You yeah. know, it's all that. that it was so, and, and the funny thing is, is when I first went back, um, when these things popped up like that, I would wait to relate and not leave and hoping the other teacher would leave. Okay. But it didn't happen. No. I stayed till six one night. And after that, I realized I did have something to say. Wow. I was further down the track than, you thought. than they were. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. And so I thought, okay. Yeah. I'll tell you this. And I warned them ahead of time. I said, it's not going to be pretty how I say this. Okay. And I'm not mad. No. And if I cry, please don't be upset. Great. But this is just me. Wow. So I was very honest with people. Yeah. Very, very honest. And, every, and I thought, I can't keep coming to school, try to teach class, and everything that reminded me of my husband, cry. Yeah. So every morning I designed this little thing that, Guy and I had chats. I would really get angry at God. I remember you, you've you talked to me about that. In the car? On In the, the car, I had 20 minutes. Okay. Uh, 20 minutes every day. I would say, okay, God, I feel terrible. I don't think this is the way I'm supposed to feel. You knew this was going to happen. I needed to be better prepared. I would tell him all kinds of things. Yeah. I beat my steering wheel. You know, then I thought about the airbag. That might not be so good if I beat <laughs> you it. You don't want that to go off, right? Yes. Yeah. But I also, I didn't care if anyone saw that I was doing it because we all had Bluetooth in our... Yeah, everybody's singing yeah. or doing something Yeah, they're in the doing car, something, right? yeah. you know, rocking yeah. out or yeah. whatever. So I boo-hooed, boo-hooed, boo-hooed. All the way to school. All the way to school. And at the end of it, I said... Thanks for listening. I did every day for a long time. Thanks for listening. I love you, and I know you're good. And someday well, I'm going to see well you done, better. Gary. Yeah. But right now, I'm not. I'm not getting it. Yeah. I'm not getting the and, plot. And I think that's a great point because, as we've talked, you've said you told God everything. You I know, did. Your darkest thought. You just put it all out there. I did, and. Uh, the one thing I knew is God loved me, hmm. and God is good. Yeah, so, he is. And he's sovereign. He's in control. Mm -hmm. He knows it today, yesterday, and yep. will know the future. Right. I had to get that in my head. That would stay in there about two minutes, and then I'd go back into my little cycle. But that would get me through my day. Wow. Yeah. I was exhausted. Yep. I would come home, and I say, "God, right now we're just, I'm just going to say thanks, thanks for the day." Wow. I didn't like today. No. But thanks. Yeah. And then I think you said, it gradually just got shorter and shorter. It became shorter and shorter. I didn't have as many complaints. Wow. I started thinking about what happened the day before, and how I saw the hand of God. Yeah. I don't want to over-spiritualize it, but I thought, I didn't cry very much yesterday. Yeah. I feel pretty good. Yeah. I didn't get lost today. Wow. Um, your, your, your emotions are just paralyzed. Right. Yeah. I, I couldn't remember um, what I did a few minutes ago. Yeah. I couldn't do everyday tasks the way I used to. Yeah. I couldn't forget multitasking. Yeah, and that's all part of grieving. Isn't it is. It? It I, was. I remember watching you because you and Bill 
were elders yeah. in our church. And, you know, you sat up front. And I remember watching you come back for yeah. the first time after he'd passed and sit in that same seat, you know. And I remember being so proud of you for doing that. It's all those moments where yeah. you have to do it alone, you know, yeah. or, or it feels alone. You it know. Felt, and yeah. coming back to church was one of the hardest things. Yeah. Because this is where Bill and I really, God really met us here. Yeah. And again, you need to strategize that. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I don't know how. Yeah. But I, I think it was the grace of God. Yeah. That allowed me to even, and I had Heidi Deverna at the time. She would meet me at the door Wonderful. and come and walk me down. Isn't that awesome? And you can always do that with a friend. Because totally. it was so important yeah. to be back here yeah. and worship God. Yeah. I'd lift my hands and praise God, and I, and I would think, I don't really feel like doing this. This is the hardest thing in my life yeah. that I've ever had to do. Yeah. But I said, you know, I thought about other people that I've known. I thought about what God went through what Jesus went through right. on this earth. And I thought of all the things that happened. Yeah. And I thought, he's been with me so much. And it even because it became, because I was so active in the church, and then just to shut it down right. would not have been me. Right. And you, you know, as the years have gone on, and we've all realized, you've realized too, as your place was still there. It was. But you can feel when, you know, and, and I, I get it because you're always spinning out. Where am I? What am I doing? Well, yeah. What's my purpose now, you know? Yeah. Um, and we talked yesterday and I, and I remember saying to you, you know, you taught for two and a half years after Bill had passed. Yeah. But I remember saying, Gay, okay, there's a place here. There always will be. Yes. And, you know, we've watched that evolve. So now you're on our, on our team. And yeah. you do a bunch of counseling and helping people. But also you are an elder in your own right in our church. And I just love, have loved watching God's hand never left you. God's call, God's purpose never left you. It never did. It just maybe looked a little bit, you know, you had to walk out some stuff. And, yeah. and I think that's really important for people to know the plan and purpose of God doesn't change on our lives. It just looks yeah. different now, you know. Um, so I'm just incredibly proud of you um what would you say you know I've heard people say after they've lost a loved one I just want to get through the first of everything yeah you know the first <laughs> birthday without them the first this holiday the first what would you say to them well there's a second birthday that comes yeah and you still remember it yes I still remember times and dates of everything and it's been 10 years wow the memory is still there yeah but I'm a little further from it right and they say intense grieving is the average time of it is about three years wow that's a long time that's a long time for intense grieving yeah yeah and and, and it gets less intense the, the further you go along but okay you think it's going to be over now yeah see we have a plan now I could go out to dinner and make that all happen but I thought, okay, I'm okay now, God. I'm okay until something reminded me of something, and then yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't okay. Yeah, I remember working with a lady who, whose husband had passed away 20 years before. Yeah, and she was just sitting in her office, and um, you know, you have music that goes through offices, and this song came on. Yeah, that was very dear to her and her husband, and the tears came again. 20 years yeah. after the fact, yeah. you know, so. It, it is. Yeah. It, the memory doesn't leave. It you. doesn't leave. But the first you think, I think it gives us a false hope sometimes. Okay. I've gotten through the first year. Yes. I survived I should Christmas. be good now. I, I should, should be, be good, good to go. I made all the plans how we can handle Christmas. I didn't want an empty chair where you yeah. used to sit. That would just be, I would have boo yeah. all Christmas day. Yeah. Um, I kept up some of the traditions. Yep. But then the second year comes. Yes, I'm a little stronger. I'm not as emotionally drained. Yep. I didn't have to have a heart-to-heart -heart talk with God every day about the loss of my husband. Right. Or his placement different. It's not yes, a loss. Yes, it's right, his right. placement like was that. different. Yeah. And so I didn't have to do that. But I did have other milestones because there were always decisions to be made. 
I remember I cried in the middle of DMV. It was, it was and I'm going, you don't know, this is my fifth personal day I've taken, and we haven't got this resolved yet. Yeah. And one lady goes, everybody, I'm closing my station down, and I'm helping this woman. And she helped me. Wow. She helped me. I thought, wow, this is that's a yeah, miracle right there. I, I, just, I just said... <laughs> I said, I'm sorry to break. She says, honey, you have every right. Yeah. But I would have meltdowns <laughs> still. let go, I'm supposed to be beyond the meltdown yeah. stage, but and I, I wasn't. You have to have, you have to give yourself grace. You, yeah. would, you would extend that to someone else, right? Yeah. And I think you have to kind of extend it to yourself. And, and go, that was the okay. scripture the Lord gave me is, my grace is sufficient for you. Yeah. I thought, really? It is? And his mercy is new every morning. I thought, yeah, it is. It is. I mean, he, he probably saw me and <laughs> thought, she's going to make it, okay. She's going to yeah. make it. I'm right here with her. Wow. She doesn't realize it. It's like when you're teaching a kid to swim. Yeah. Don't let go. Or when they're teaching them to ride a bike, don't let go. Did you let go? Did you let go? Right. And you, you're like that with God sometimes. Yeah. But he never let go. I never really was so mad at God I couldn't talk to him. Wow. That's awesome. I was not always happy with him. No, right. But I wasn't so mad. I thought, I've got to tell you this. Wow. Because I feel this. Wow. And I, I said, I think you're interested in this. And if you're not, just listen. <laughs> yes, I love that. I but love I was that. very honest with I know. him. And I know, and I love that you did that because I think that was part of that you was right here to help me. Yeah, help me. Um, you know, there's four steps to grief. I think, right? Yeah, there's anger, pain, depression, and there's different ones. They've added them up to seven. Okay, and you know, sometimes people go, okay, so tell me the plan. How how do, how am I supposed to work through this? <laughs> Again, what would you say to that? You go in and out of different stages. Okay. And you have to be able to determine that that's what's happening to you. Okay. And you have to give yourself grace. Yeah. I'm not going to be who I was before, but I have someone inside me yeah. that is more powerful yeah. than I ever could be. Yeah. And I could fall apart any day sometimes but I don't just with circumstances yeah but I've learned that that big strong arm of God is something I can depend on that's awesome you know when you look back over 10 years yeah and obviously grief is a process and you know obviously you're through the intense part of that but then there's mm -hmm. memories that get triggered through different things what is the hardest thing about the grief process? If you could, or is there, or are there several hard things? What is it? You're just this pain that will not leave you. Is it the one that is the hardest for me? Yep. And it was always been the hardest from like the first day is watching other couples go on with life. Right. Now, because the world continues, and but yours has mine is different. Yeah. And someone says, don't you want to marry someone else? I do not. Right. I do not. Right. I, you know. Um, he was the love of your life. He was. Your forever. Yeah. It, it, and it would be so different. It, yeah. It would be so different. Yeah. But I, I don't like to hear people complain about their husband. <laughs> no, you're like, really? Really? You um, have him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You can, you can work it out, honey. Yeah. You can work it Which out. Which is great perspective for people. You, you know, know I, I, I just, I miss that. Yes. I miss the trips. Yes. I miss what we were together. Yes. And what you'd hoped life would look like. Yeah. It's all that that, that yeah. has shifted, you know. It's and, shifted. And I I mean, your son and daughter-in-law moved down here with those three gorgeous that girls. That has been a godsend. Yes. And so you, you know, you guys have a great house set up where you have your own part and yeah which again is part of finding God in the midst isn't it you know it is it, it was one of those things uh but I've eventually gotten over watching other couples be together and I can have my own fun good and and 
that's just who you are. You've always, you're always kind of the life of the party, just wonderful company. And I could, I could see, you know, you're like, you know what, we can, we can make this happen. I'll just, yes. I'll get to do it my way. You yeah, know? I do it my way. Yeah. You know, Gay, I was thinking the last year and a half particularly, we've had a year and a half like nothing else we've ever seen. Yeah. And a lot of people are grieving right now. Yeah. You know, there's loss in lots of ways. There's mm-hmm. loss of loved ones, obviously, with COVID. But there's also, you know, loss of what life looked like. A lot of things have changed and, you know, maybe job situations, health situations, mm-hmm. I, I, any number of things. Loss of control. Like, what? Where is yeah. my? what's my life going to mm-hmm. look like? What would you say to people who have found themselves grieving just – the loss of anything what what would you say to help people get through this because I believe grief is it's kind of God designed really isn't it it is it is it is it's to walk you through and get you through to the other side right what would you say to people we have to kind of recalibrate our thinking right and you have to do that when you when you lose someone because we've kind of lost school system the way it used to be right we lost health care the way we do different things, things that were just standard. Yes. And we've got to recalibrate. Right. And we've got to know that that emotional instability, we will survive it. Right. We will survive it. But we can't keep dwelling on what's changed. Okay. In order to move forward, okay, this is how we're going to adapt. Okay. We Which is what you adapt. did. You know, you mm-hmm. had to own, okay, my husband isn't here, you know, yeah. anymore. And so you would say we just learn to adapt. Um, and I think connection with people is yes. vital too, isn't it? It was. It was. And you can't, and, and I'm going to put a plug in for church here. Yep. Because kind of the first place we let go of right. when we're grieving, whether it's a loss of someone or whether it was during COVID, is church. Yeah. And I've, he- I've, I've heard people say that I can't because the memory of them being there. But you would say, no, I'd absolutely. say Bill's cheering me on. Yes. And go, because that's obviously he would want, but you yeah. knew I need to be there. I need to worship God. I need to put myself in there. I had, but I have had people to be, help you be in that place yeah, too. And yeah, and I had to. Yeah. But it only lasted for a season. Yeah. It only last, and we we have to know that there's a season. Right. We will always have the memory. We will always feel an upsurge every once in a while of grief. Right. But it's not going to be eternal. Not forever. Mm -hmm. It's not going to affect everyday life because life goes on, and we can get over this. We can with God's help. And uh, that's what you do. Yeah. That's what you do. My son said something because. I tried not to go to church when I was in Connecticut. <laughs> I said, well, I'm with the twins. Yeah, I'm we don't busy. Get to st- I'm we busy. don't get to stay in the service yeah. anyway. They're crying. I'm in and out. Yeah. And he looked at me and he says, Mom. I said, yes. We don't stay home from church. Wow. I said, what? He said, to hand chucks. <laughs> Do not stay home Wow. from church. Wow. I said, okay. He said, we do church. Yeah. You know, and I know during COVID there were some health reasons that some of us, but we can still do online. Yeah. We can still have that time that we pray to God. Yeah. Uh, We still have that time we read the word. Yeah. You know, because that's what, where we build our strength. Right. Yeah. I heard someone once say, hard isn't bad. Yeah. We have this idea that if it's hard, it's not good for us. But yeah. actually, it's good. hard makes us. Hard yeah. builds a resolve. Hard gets us, you know, pushing yourself through that gets you through to the other side. Yeah. And so I think yeah. that's something that it's is It's a goal to clear. get to the other side. Yeah, because exactly. I did not want to be that person every morning beating on my steering wheel. Yeah. Just stuck. Just yeah. stuck in a, in a repeat yeah. pattern. Yeah. You know, because life was, there's, I have a whole lot to live for. Yes, you do. And I have a whole lot 
to do on this earth. Yes, you do. For the Lord. Yeah, you do. Forever how long I have. Right. So that's that's who I am. Yeah, that's I know. what I want. Yeah. And Bill would have said, and that's why I picked her. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. And um, you're one of Wave Church's greatest assets, Gay. You know, oh, your thank wisdom, you. your love and care, compassion for people, I just think is second to none. So I just want to thank you. Thank you for this conversation. Oh, I thank appreciate it. Thank you for your honesty time. and vulnerability. Yeah. But also I want to honor your husband, Bill Tehanchuk, who was an incredible man of God. He was. He loved the house of God, loved Jesus with his whole heart, a pillar. Yeah. And really is the very reason you're here now. So, yeah. again, I yeah. just want to give him a shout out. And your son, Billy, and his wife, Nicole, who, again, are incredible people who were all part of this journey. Right. And, you know. Um, they sacrificed a lot to yeah, be and here. They're, and they're here and, and are just flourishing too. So yeah. thank yeah. you. Uh -huh. Thank you. And thank you. I hope you enjoyed our uh, Spotlight on a Sisters episode three and uh, we'll see you next time.